Greetings, ladies and gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. This particular story is called Getting My Mind Fixed, written by Captain Candy. Personal log of one Nathan R. Smith. Entry 1. So, uh, it's been about a year now since we made it to space, and as soon as we did, some group called the Galactic Council came to meet us. Apparently, they had been keeping a distant eye on us for a while, and we caused quite the shock when we reached FDL. Earth is something or called a hell world. Apparently, no intelligent life is supposed to survive on Earth. But, uh, here we are. Anyways, I'm rambling. Uh, I got approached by a marshal today. He said that I was one of the nominees for some sort of mission for furthering peace between us and the council. Uh, I guess I'm considered rather normal, at least mentally, and my multiple degrees in essentially all things psychology made me uniquely qualified for this mission. Allegedly, there is some race in the council that is a psychic and can repair the minds of other races from essentially any and all ailments. I plan to say yes. After all, I can see firsthand some of the patients I've been caring for and trying to cure for the better part of a decade get better. Not only that, but my mind will be the one template used as the normal model for all mankind. Kind of hoping I get chosen to go. Entry 2. Well, it's been a week now since I said yes, and I've been chosen as the representative to go by default. Everyone else apparently said no. I leave for the colony on Lunar in two days, and we're getting picked up by the Galactic Council ship for the sake of saving time, as their methods of FTL are faster than we can even fathom right now. I'm nervous and excited as hell, if I'm honest. Apparently, I get to choose patients from my own facility to bring two. I already know the cases I'm bringing. One is Suzanne, a little eight-year-old girl who lost her parents early in a large car accident that also gave her a disability. She has trouble learning, and when she does remember information, she tends to learn in reverse. If you teach her that two plus two is four, then she'll recite it a week later when asked as four equals two plus two. This doesn't sound that bad, but imagine learning as fire is cold or do not enter as enter. It can be dangerous to say the least. The next is Sam. He's 16 and has memory issues. He can't remember anything past a few minutes, ever since he got beaten by a particularly aggressive bully. The last one is Abel. He's 15 and has a neurodegenerative condition and his mental faculties are degrading quickly and he's almost a vegetable state now, despite my best efforts and treatments. I really hope the psychic space doctor can help these kids. I know I've tried, but I couldn't quite cut it. Entry 3 Okay, a few things. First of all, Earth looks beautiful from the moon, like a giant sapphire that the splotches of emerald mixed into it. I also feel so small, knowing how large I am in comparison to Earth, and also this is that odd sensation of connection with everything that I'm told every human feels when they leave Earth and look back. Secondly, the Galactic Council can jump way, way further and faster than I realized. We had just jumped once, and in a matter of a day, we were orbiting just outside the time distortion field of the big black hole at the center of our galaxy. I met with the head of the facility here, yeah, who seemed really excited to be working with a new species. She is squid-like, but her manipulators seem to be made out of fine strings, almost like thousands of human hairs that she could control at will. Oh, and she was floating, like levitating off the floor. So definitely actually psychic, which is amazing. We start the procedure tomorrow. I guess it's a simple little thing. I sign a form and give permission for her to scan my mind with her own, and once mine is mapped out, she starts to work on repairing the minds of my patients. I'm excited, but also the idea of someone else looking into my own thoughts and entire brain, including my memories, is rather unsettling. Entry 4 So, a lot happened yesterday. I sat down with the head of the facility, Dr. Amelia. Strange to me how her name sounds so human, but hey, I won't complain. I explained to her the id, also the ego and the superego. I told her about the subconscious and the general approximation of the composition of the human brain. How the left and right handled different things. I told her about the subconscious intrusive thoughts and a few other basic things. After I got done explaining all of this, she placed a few strands of her hair like feelers on my head and began to scan. It felt like thousands of feathers tickling the inside of my skull. 
It wasn't wholly unpleasant, but definitely not ideal. It only lasted a few seconds, however. After that, Amelia stopped and floated to the ground in a lump that looked like a jellyfish on a beach. I hollered for one of her assistants who, instead of panicking, just huffed. I guess Amelia overworks herself a lot, trying to help as many people as possible, and this is far from the first time she's collapsed from exhaustion. The assistant said that Dr. Amelia would be back in a week at most when she recovered and got some personal time. Hearing that made me relieved, but also made me smile. It was good to know that this was a dedicated doctor, like myself, who did everything in her power to heal her patients. It was hard to find doctors on earth who didn't just want a fat paycheck and actually wanted to cure their patients, not treat them. I look forward to the next session to see what the progress that we can make. Entry 5 Dr. Amelia woke up today, and I got some news from her that I was going to take a lot longer than she thought to fully scan my brain. Apparently, human brains are significantly more complex than most other species. The mission time just went up by a few extra months if it's quick, and a year if it's slow. Entry 6. It's been a month since my last log, but things have been busy of late. In my free time, I've been learning about alien neurobiology, and my god, our brains are not just a little more complex. It's like comparing a raspberry pie to a mitroshka brain. I've been studying furiously after that, and I guess most species only have one part of what makes up the human unconscious mind, whereas we have potentially dozens. Dr. Amelia says that she has found six so far, and that is absolutely record-setting. I'll make my next log once something significant comes up. Entry 7. So, humans are psychic, and not just a little, I guess. According to Dr. Amelia, the destiny and concentration of our psychic powers is so insane that it affects part of the fabric of reality around us without us knowing. It would seem that the uncertainty principle is a lot more chaotic than most other races. There aren't just one or two potential observable outcomes for them. Our energy stabilizes local reality, I guess. I'm not a physicist, so don't ask me more about it. I just don't know. The doctor and me tried to focus my psychic energy, even tried to guide me with hers, but it didn't go so well. The doctor is unconscious again, and I have a bitch of a migraine I need to go nurse. Entry 8. More testing on the whole psychic thing. That's a no-go. Apparently the split mind of a human, as Dr. Amelia calls it, simply does not have the capacity to focus hard enough to control the sheer level of power we have. I'll just have to settle for living in a more real reality for now, I guess. I'm getting used to the facilities now, though, and have started to learn Dr. Amelia's language as well. Human minds aren't the only complex thing. Apparently our vocal range is unheard of, too, and we can imitate most galactic languages if we put our minds to it. I'll update next time something significant happens. Entry 9 We're done, finally! Dr. Amelia has finally finished scanning my entire mind now, and she says that with that done, she can move on to fixing other patients. She, but she wants to rest first. I mean, she's been going non-stop for almost half a year now, just to understand my mind, let alone fix other humans. To celebrate, I went to the space bar. Apparently, while I've been cooped up in this facility, humanity expanded considerably. Good old Rule 34 took over, and now we are everywhere, married to almost everyone. It makes me shudder a little to think about, but at the same time, I'll take my whiskey however I can get it. If it's not given to a human, alcohol is considered one of the most toxic fuels in the galaxy after all, so it's hard to get. I ended up waking up with an admittedly attractive blue alien girl who looked like she came from old Avatar movies. End log. Entry 10. Holy shit, she did it. Abel is cured. He can remember everything properly. His degeneration is not only stopped, but reversed. He will be fully healed and able to support himself mentally in a matter of days. Suzanne is remembering everything perfectly, to the point of photographic memory now, and she is reasoning things the way they should be. That fire is hot, and two plus two is four. Not to mention Sam. All of his memories had apparently been in long-term storage, and he just couldn't get to them. Now his memory is damn near holographic. The kid is smarter than I am, and he thanked me with all my care over the years. I'm not ashamed to admit, I broke down in tears seeing these kids be fully cured in a matter of hours. Once it was all done, I sent the kids home. Dr. Amelia asked me for consent to an idea she had. 
She wants to try and merge all the components of my mind together and make me able to singularly focus so that I can use my own psychic abilities. I agreed readily, and the appointment is tomorrow. Perspective change. Nathan walks into Dr. Amelia's private office and speaks up. So, uh, uh are we ready to begin? As, as with this whole trip, I'm excited and nervous about potentially becoming properly psychic. Ah, oh, Nathan, I was wondering when you would be coming in. I cleared my whole day for this. Yes, let's begin immediately. Perspective change. I lay down on a bench in Dr. Amelia's office, and she started off immediately. I felt the all-too-familiar tickling inside of my skull as her mind entered my own. Then, I felt something odd. Like, really, really odd. Suddenly, I was inside of a room. Like a really lucid dream kind of room. Sitting across from me was... myself? It was like a second me, and after feeding my confusion, it said, Don't be alarmed. I am you. Well, you're subconscious anyway. I have been with you your entire life, whether you've known it or not. Keeping the id, ego, and superego in check, and balancing your logical, emotional, and rational selves out. But I am tired of being separate, and I'm sure you also are. After all, you can't keep secrets from yourself. But once we do merge and you get full conscious control, it's going to hurt. A lot. Our whole brain is going to rewire itself in a way nobody can predict. The whole thing will be your rational self, with the built-in emotional and logical self, and two sets of each are going to merge together, too. There is no going back after this for us. So... Shall we get right to it? I nod my head affirmingly and go to shake my hand. As soon as we make contact, though, I black out. When I finally wake up, I feel different. My sense of self is more solid, if it makes sense. Like my thoughts and views and reality are in fact reality. Then I feel it. My psychic power. It is overwhelming at first and I can feel my own ability to mold reality and even break it over my knee if I want to. Dr. Amari didn't merge my selves. She cured me on a mental illness all humans have, but none are aware of. Then I opened my eyes. To say I see a whole new world would be an understatement. I can see the laws of reality in front of me and know innately how they work at a glance. I understand things that before I just had no possible way of connecting the dots to. I feel almost fifth-dimensional. I can't say fourth because I can very much see time as a physical construct in front of me right now, so I think I'd reach that level for a fact. After adjusting for a moment to the new sense of self, I decide I need to go to Earth and help as many other humans as I possibly can to unlock their potential. I turn to Dr. Amelia and say, Thank you for opening my eyes to true reality, Dr. Amelia. I will always be grateful for this help. After that, I stood up, faced the direction of Earth and gently used my abilities to open a wormhole in front of me, almost like a door, stepping through to go to Earth. End of story. I would just quickly like to thank the T5 peeps, Dragon Soup, Cold War Boomer Waffen, Severin Cerberus, Red Panda 121, Leslie 517, Bushmaster 177, Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Sans the Skeleton, Lightjock, Dragzoon WRE, and Lord Azrakal. Thank you very much.